welcome to the legendary Blarney Castle, where on the very top people kiss the stone. Now, of course, we are living in strange times, so I'm not sure if the, kit, the stone is kissable, but we are going to go up this famous castle here in Ireland, just about 20 minute drive away from Cork City. Join me as we explore Blarney Castle, which was constructed in 1446. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanus, and let's explore. Blarney Castle, I'm so excited for this. Look at that. We're gonna go up there. Uh, I think we can see some of the castle. I'm not entirely sure how much we can see it, but we'll um, see what's viewable. And maybe we'll get, catch a glimpse of the stone, but no promises because I'm, it's unclear whether everything's open. Let's go inside, shall we? To Blarney Castle. So here are the views. We're 20 minutes away from Cork City, about 40 minutes if you end up taking bus. And all the gardens are viewable as well, which is very cool. And let's go inside. So this is the Blarney Stone this way. Hey Kay, hello Dr. David, hello Maria, nice to see you here. Let's wait until this group passes. Hey, Kinsani says, watching Ariel has become a morning ritual. Yeah, indeed, it has. Hey, Coriander, nice to see you here. Hello, Irene, welcome. So this is the ground floor room. When it was first built, this cellar chamber had a wooden floor above, which was supported by the stone corbels you see sticking out at the east and west walls. Originally, it probably housed servants or more junior household members. You'll see a passage in the east wall that leads through to a round arch window and a gun loop. But as you see the steps, you'll see some brick lined shelves, which were used as a wine cellar. Quick, the Blarney Castle. 46. Before there was this castle, there was some type of and before then there was a hunting lodge. So this has been inhabited for quite a while. However, Cormac McCarthy, according to legend, ended up uh, getting into a nasty lawsuit <laughs> with some nearby clan or near, nearby town. And he sought the wisdom and the help of the goddess of beauty and love. Her name was Kleena. Of course, it uh, has a little bit more of an Irish pronunciation. And Kleena said, okay, yeah, I'll help you. Uh, as you go towards the cork, to the court, probably in cork, kiss a stone. And thus he did. He kissed a stone that he saw on his way to cork. <laughs> and he ended up getting the gift of gab, the gift of flattery and eloquence. And when he went to the court, and he was summoned, he ended up getting scot-free. 
When he started building this castle, subsequently, he decided to bring that same stone and put it all the way to the very top because he knew it could be dangerous if anyone had access to it. That's one of the legends. There's a second legend as well. Hello, Melody. Nice to see you here. Welcome. People have left their names over here. Did you just start? I did indeed, Ronald. Yeah, I just started. So welcome everyone to the live video. Luckily it's not full. Usually this would be packed to the brim with people. Hello, Duane. Nice to see you here. So a lot of people have been leaving graffiti and things like that. Susie says you've had enough of that. You have enough of Gift of Gab. Oh, thank you so much, Susie. So a lot of people have left graffiti here. Lenal says, no, yeah, you got here right on time. I couldn't announce this because, you know, this was a day trip and today's my off day. So <laughs> all of you are getting lucky. I'm making a video of my off day. I hope you're enjoying me working on my day off. Let's go upstairs. All right, this is going to be claustrophobic. So if you suffer from claustrophobia, well, consider yourself lucky that you're watching just a video and not actually experiencing this yourself. You know, being a very, very tall 5'2", I can barely fit. And I'm wearing masks because they require it. Internal stairs. For all welcoming intentions today, castles were designed to keep people out and not let them in. <laughs> That's not very reassuring. A narrow staircase can be easily defended if the attackers only advance one at a time, yeah. And the steps are supposed to be uneven, so you gotta watch out with the steps. And the reason the steps are supposed to be uneven was because you can easily trip and fall because you don't know the castle, and they can slash you. So, yeah, be careful with the steps. B. Griffin says, Ariel suffers from claustrophobia, so you don't need to. Luckily, I do not suffer from claustrophobia, but yes. <laughs> All right, so uneven steps, tiny pathway, wet rope. Okay. All right, wish me luck, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you know how much I love, love climbing stairs. Oh, Wednesday was your day off, says uh, Susie. Well, tomorrow, technically, yes. I'm, I'm not making a live video at the scheduled time. Wow, this is... Oh my god. You can't... Don't bring a big book bag here. <laughs> what is this chamber? Ooh. The guard... Garter robe off the t stairs leads to one of the castle's luxuries. An uh, indoor lavatory. A wooden seat here for three people would have run along the outer wall and built into the north wall, and the channel door leading down for ventilation. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is the loo, ladies and gentlemen. This is the throne, but not... This is where you would do your business. Must have been a lot thinner people back in the day in castles, yes. <laughs> All right. Who likes climbing stairs? Let me know in the comments. I know a lot of people are fans of climbing stairs. Many of you have asked me, Ariel, can you do another video where you climb a lot of stairs, please? <laughs> Chrissy says, I'm usually not claustrophobic, but this is giving me anxiety. <laughs> me too, kind of, a little bit, because of... The fear of uneven steps. Dermot says, do not kiss a stone. Why not, Dermot? It's not like we're in a pandemic.
Yeah, I'm afraid this is not the most entertaining portion of the broadcast. But weirdly enough, my videos were climbing a lot of stairs. A lot of people watch them. I think it's not entertaining. Oh my god. Okay, use the rope. Use the rope, ladies and gentlemen. All right, good. The most important room. The kitchen. You are now standing in the kitchen of the castle. It's a lofty position in the castle serving a number of purposes. It was built next to the banqueting hall, greatly easing the catering delivery. If the cook burnt the cakes, the whole castle was not at risk. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. And if boiling oil was necessary, they would pour it on unwelcome guests. Yeah, you gotta watch out <laughs> if you're attacking these castles. Originally, it was not a kitchen at all. The large window to the south made a glorious sun trap. It was probably originally a rather special bedchamber for the lord and his lady with a pyramid-shaped roof. Oh, that's interesting. But it all changed in the 1600s, by 1500s, with an enormous fireplace capable of roasting the biggest beasts. We do love a party. <laughs> That's awesome. So, people are already up there. And this is the staircase. It can't burn down as it's made out of wood. Oh, stone, says Dwayne. So, Dwayne, you would be surprised. Probably a lot of wood was used in these castles. It's just we don't see them because wood degrades over time. And it has disappeared since then. <laughs> hey. B. Griffin has, uh, asks, is this the Blarney Castle with the Blarney Stone? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. B. Griffin, all right, just bear with me uh, so I don't tumble down the stairs. Uh, I, have, I have size 12 shoes, so my feet are we're never big for this. Okay. I'll just show you the view looking downwards, I think. That's a little bit more of a, right? A little bit more of a pleasant view, ladies and gentlemen. All right, this is a tight space. Why was I born so tall at 5'2"? <laughs> okay, I put my camera down. Okay. Oh. You want to pass ahead? All right. Yeah, go for it. All right, here are the views. So there's a lot of grass in Ireland, of course, and even the grass covers the castles. Okay, you've done that, this climb. Oh, that's awesome. Is it only up? Yeah, there's no way down Coriander. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Christian, nice to see you here. Welcome to the live video. Climbing up the Blarney Castle. Here we see the beautiful gardens. This is the Bon. This was a huge defensive structure. So castles were always, usually accompanied by walls. And this is the walls that remain. I think some of the walls may have been knocked down. Hey! Christine and Swisser both send, uh, Sunshine, Christine and Swisser. Uh, I'll send super chats. Thank you so much for the super chats. Audrey says, I feel giddy. Oh, yeah. Who wants to gift the gab? Let me know. Okay, so it says, please remove, if you're going to the Blarney Castle, uh, kissing the stone, please remove bags, hats, glasses, or anything else loose in your pockets. Okay, we will do. All right, that's not, that's not a sharp drop uh, at all, you know, no. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay. It's just a, you know, just a small little, little, uh, 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 let me stop looking down.
there's an evidence of a moat. It kind of looks like there was a moat, but I can't tell you for sure. So I don't know. All right. The gift of gab is going to be even more super awesome after Ariel does this. I already have the gift of gab, I think. People have told me that. So it seems like if you kiss the Blarney Stone, I'll be unstoppable. opportunities to look down the Blarney Stone we have reached to the top here it is ladies and gentlemen let me put on my mask so uh, So the Blarney Stone is right down there. I think they allow people to kiss it. Hey, Ray Kelly, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Danny says I would never do that climb. <laughs> it's pretty fun, admittedly, it's pretty fun. I might be dramatizing a little bit, so it's not too bad. So there's a lot of terms here, a lot of little plaques here. This is really cool. It says the term Blarney, meaning beguiling, but misleading talk, gained currency during the, the 16th century as the McCarty of the day attempted to fend off the demands of Queen Elizabeth I. Legends about the stone origin emerged, each as plausible as the next. It is said to have been the stone used by Jacob as a pillow when he dreamed of a ladder extending up to heaven. With angels sending and descending on it, the stone was brought from the Holy Land after the Crusades. So that's a very interesting uh, legend, and there's, a, there's another legend where uh, one of the other McCartys, Donna McCarty, um, allied himself with the Scots to oust the British, and the Scots end up getting independence. So Robert the Bruce, who's a Scot, end up giving this stone that probably he found on Ireland, but was over there in Scotland, end up giving the stone uh, back to the McCarthys, saying, use this so you can keep control of your lands. Some people say that Robert the Bruce uh, found the stone in Scotland. Well, interestingly enough, they did test on the stone and they found out the stone is strictly from this area. Uh, they found that the stone matches all the limestone from this area. So it is from Ireland, the stone. So here it says, another legend says that it was given by the McCarthy chieftain by Robert Bruce in thanks to the support offered by sending 5,000 kerns, which is foot soldiers, to Scotland to help him against Edward II. That was a part of the Stone of Scone. I love that, the Stone of Scone. The, the Stone of Scone, on which the kings of Scotland were inaugurated. This custom was pr uh, practiced by the Irish chieftains too, and survivors today at the coronation of the British monarch, who is crowned on the Stone of Scone. There is a similar stone in, um, Westminster Abbey. A further legend tells us that Cormac McCarty, the builder of the earliest part of the castle, rescued an old woman drowning in the lake. She turned out to be a witch. In gratitude, she told him of a certain stone in the castle that had magical properties and that he could benefit by kissing it. Mm, interesting. And there's one more here. However, the most elaborate and romantic legend concerns the Queen of the Fairies Ooh. in South Munster, which is this area of Ireland, divided into four traditional provinces, was a beautiful daughter of the leading druid. She fell in love with a gallant young chieftain who broke her heart, but by not returning her love. He was killed in battle. She found his body on the stone on the banks of the River Lee, was just south of Blarney. His blood had soaked into the stone. There she grieved, her tears joining the blood in the stone which she continually kissed. This caused her magical powers to be absorbed by the stone herself. A further version of the legend tells us that Cormac uh, McCarthy, being troubled by the intransigent problem, was advised by the Queen of the Fairies that this stone on which she had wept had been built into the castle and that if he kissed it, his difficulties would be resolved. And so it was. Cormac, the head of the McCarthy clan, or not clan, but they have a different word for 
the Irish uh, groups, therefore had the stone taken to the top of Blarney Castle, where it was found today. Whatever its origins, the powers of the Blarney Stone, the Stone of Eloquence, are unquestioned. Hey, how's it going? Are you guys allowing the stone to be kissed? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you are? That's awesome. You mind holding the camera for me? Sure. And let me just clear my pockets. Your pockets, jeans pockets will be okay. Oh, what? The jeans pockets will be fine. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I won't. Be. I'll just put it away just in case. I'm on live video right now. Yeah, yeah you can tell. <laughs> That's great. When did they allow people to uh, keep uh, kissing it before again? June. Just before June. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Oh, yeah. The classes? Yes, classes. So you can take off the mask if you want. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Alright, everyone. Kissing the Blarney Stone to get even more Gift of Gab over here. I already have the Gift of Gab, so what happens if I click kiss it? I double down, yes. <laughs> All right. Lay back. I got it. Grab the vows behind you. Just lay back for some. Okay. Vows behind you. Okay. Yeah. Head down and kiss this one. You're too high. Way too high. Way too high? Down here. Down here. Okay. Down the bottom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, that is a good no workout for the neck. <laughs> Thank you. Just gonna show the stone a little bit closer. Not that many, not that many people are coming over here. Not at the no. moment, no. Um, no. With all the restrictions and stuff, kind of still in place. It's, it's kind of killed tourism a bit, but yeah. it's tipping away. You know, it's not too bad. How many people usually kiss the stone on a daily basis? Well, before COVID, it could yeah. have been up to thirteen hundred a day kissing it. Like, wow. Yeah, you could have a couple of thousand in walking through. Like, <laughs> yeah, it used to be very, very busy. That's a lot. Good immunities, I assume, yeah, that people get yeah, from it. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so I got even more gift of gab, ladies and gentlemen. It's like uh, similar to Thanos getting all the Infinity Stones in the Avengers. So. The power is mine. <laughs> Let me put on my glasses and then I'll show you a little bit more of the castle. <laughs> I can't read your comments at all. Uh, I don't wear glasses merely for, for style. I wear them because, you know, I can't see. I may have the gift of gab, but I don't have the gift of pure good eyesight. It's kind of terrifying also, so... <laughs> You saw it myself, like hanging there upside down, but it's one thing seeing someone hanging upside down, it's another thing actually being the person hanging upside down. It's quite terrifying because you have to hold on to these bars. I know that the, the, the drop is super steep. I'll show you the drop over here. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Kay says now we can't, we can't shut him up now. <laughs> the gift of Gab is working, says Andre. <laughs> So right over here, look look how deep that that was the what I had to lean over. That's why I had to lean over. Oh wow, okay. I gotta take a breather. Dwayne says that's scary. Yeah, indeed it is. Oof. It's hard on your neck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you have to do it backwards. Uh, because it, there's not really a safe way, I think, to do it forwards. So they do it backwards, and those guys there are stationed there. Um, I think for many decades it has been the case where people have been stationed to kiss the Blarney Stone. And, um, and yeah, they have the guardrails. So I think before this became a tourist attraction, people were 
hanging off for their dear lives in order to kiss the stone before it was a tourist attraction coming here in the middle of the night. You can just imagine that. It's kind of crazy to think about. You're tall, maybe that's why, says Coriander. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't quite bend down the proper way. Ramal says, uh, you saw the stone blush. Oh, I'm glad. No one else except those two men. There, there's a few tourists, but not that many. Usually there would be a line up the castle to kiss the stone. Luckily, it's pretty empty here today. And here's views of the Irish side. Now let's go find the four-leaf clover, says the waitress. Yeah, <laughs> complete the good luck. One less item on your bucket list, says Susie. <laughs> you know, it was never really uh, in my bucket list. Becky says, imagine if it gave you superpowers. Well, as I mentioned, I already have the gift of gab, so I just doubled it right now. Netflix is going to call tomorrow. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you soon on the Netflix show near you. BBC is also calling, so I'll be on BBC as well. And I'm being hired to be a um, supporting role in the next Marvel film, so stay tuned. Christy says you still have the gift of gab. <laughs> Thank you. The more people are doing it here. And there's the exit. Well, let's stick around. What would you name your Netflix show? Says uh, Trisha. Question. Look at the beautiful clouds. So the women over there decide to skip the kissing of the stone. Hey, thank you so much for putting the PayPal. Someone asked for the PayPal link. Here it is. Thank you everyone wanting to contribute. Imagine how that was before guardrails. Well, my center of balance over here is higher than this stone, so this is a bit scary. Dwayne says, what a nice view. Yeah, Dwayne, gorgeous view, actually. Gorgeous, gorgeous view. Is the stone sanitized after each kiss? It's a good question. They do have sanitizing equipment right next to them. Uh, so I would assume so. I just didn't want to ask them on camera, <laughs> just in case, but it does seem to be the case. It does seem. And if you see other videos, even pre-pandemic, they, they had sanitizing equipment. I just didn't want to ask him putting on the spot. Hey, girl in the curl, nice to see you here. Thank you so much for tuning in from Seal Beach, California. Oh, so gorgeous. Dermot says, I really got a nice day. Hoyser wouldn't be hard to find because he stands at 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, famous um, indie pop artist. Um, so huge round of hearts, everyone, to D. D has been a viewer for a little bit more than two years. And he loves the New York videos. And he lives, he's a corkman. Uh, so he ended up uh, driving me here today again, giving me a lift. So I had, didn't have to take a bus ride over here. So huge round of hearts to D meeting up with him after I get out of here. Um, so huge round of hearts of D one more time. Let me show you more of the views and then I'm going back down. D is spelled D-E-E, -E, D E E. It's short for Dermot, but he, he goes mostly by D. Uh, 
man says, I think I'll remain ineloquent. <laughs> The gift shop has Aaron jumpers. They do, Dermot. Yeah, that's why I want to go down and get to them. All right. One more time, the view's over here, and then I'll head down. One more time, the views. It's very windy up here. It is, yeah. Hey, Susu says I hang down upside down every day to stretch my back, uh, but not at that altitude, though, which is good because I have a fear of heights. Oh, Susu. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting experience stretching upside down. Now, there's a garden here also filled with poison flowers. Um, yeah. <laughs> So there's a few things here. All right, let's go. Some people miss the ascent of narrow passages. Maybe show your descent. What a view, says Camilla. Oh, yes. And there's the river Blarney, and there's another river as well here. <laughs> yeah. Show over here before I go down. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, <it's> so terrifying. <laughs> NW says, there's got to be easier ways to get stoned. Again. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready to go downstairs? Let me know. I don't think I'm ready. Let me know if you're ready. Okay, all right. Climbing stairs, okay. Climbing down is fun, right, ladies and gentlemen? It's supposed to be fun, right? Okay, I think, I think this will be, be a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Who else doesn't like slippery, uneven, narrow staircases? They're like so cool. You know, if a guy would trip and have my sword, I'm like, bah. But I won't do that because I'm a pacifist. So this is the banqueting hall that would be here. So this is four stories tall, ladies and gentlemen, four to five. Stories tall, right over here. Your feet are longer than the staircase, they are. They also had a chapel, and they had a family room. Oh, like modern day suburban homes in America. Oh, Gary says, no, the stairs are going anti-clockwise, so the right-handed knights could be defending it with their swords. But Gary does not, that doesn't help me because I'm left-handed. <laughs> That's awesome, Gary. Thank you for the extra pro tip. That's awesome. So everyone, yeah, the staircases would be easier for the knights to defend themselves because if the knight is coming up, the attacker coming up, he can't draw his sword due to the very narrow staircase. All right, let me... Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, go for it.
So here's another Lou. This is the garderobe. Let's go down. Climb the stairs backwards, says Bar Barris. So in, in the other place I went to, the watchtower, you do have to climb the stairs backwards. I, because of the camera and, it, it, yeah, because of the camera and uh, how tight it was, I felt a little bit more comfortable climbing forwards. But that was because it was a ladder. This is a stairs, so climbing forwards is, is normal. Oh, here we have the ancillary chamber. What does this do? A simple curtain will convert this small, well-lit chamber to be suitable for the lady of the house to retinue. What does that mean? Today we see this into the stair war or the black stairs. In 1839, the antiquarian Windelel remarked that the stairs could never have. Travels. Why is that? You can hear clearly someone who's uh, two or three stories down. Anyone know why? This is so interesting. Right over here. Swisser, thank you so much for a five dollar super chat. Eighteen fifty six. This person was from eighteen fifty six. Wow. Eighteen forty seven, something along those lines. Oh wow, these are old graffitis. Seems nineteen seventy something, nineteen seventy three maybe. Susie, this is the, the family room and everyone else. Feel any ghost vibes? No, no, I don't feel any ghost vibes here. This was the family room. It had glazed windows, uh, a huge fireplace, big enough to roast a side of beef. Oh, that sounds so good. Uh, and if you look to the top of the room on your right, you can still see the traces of the ornate stucco. Top to the right. That's impressive. The mirror room and the young lady's room. Watch your head. Lady came over here, says Ronald. Uh, time for urbanist climbing crazy stairs compilation video. <laughs> this is the young lady's bedroom and also the priest's room. Uh, why are they next to each other? Anyways, um, King of Chat now. After that kiss says one day. <laughs> Ashley says, Urban is 2021, writing a novel. <laughs> now with that gift of gab. You could do a, a ghost tour of Cork some night when you're in Ireland now, says Eugene. Is there a lot of ghost stories in Cork, Eugene? Do let me know. All right, everyone, we're stuck inside. 
no way out. This is my Airbnb for the night. I'm gonna sleep here. Um, they told me that they're gonna bring a bed. I hope, I hope they bring the bed. I can't, I can't sleep otherwise, but yeah. And my Airbnb for the night at the, at the young lady's room. <laughs> it does not sound right. <laughs> Wendy says comfy. Yeah, yeah, you know, it has a nice, good air conditioning, natural air conditioning. Oh, a natural bench. That's fun. All right, everyone. We're going to do a bench test inside a little uh, castle nook. This is interesting. Feels cozy, that's for sure. Feels cozy. There is good acoustics here. And you don't feel the draft. Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. I feel claustrophobic and comforted at the same exact time. Cluster comforted right now. That's, that's exactly how I feel. And it's a bit tight. I can't... All right. There we go. That's a lot better. Right. It's not that comfy. I would give this bench... There's no bird poo. That's good. The draft is not hitting me. And it's a bit claustrophobic. So it gets a little points off. But it's a bit comfy, so it gets a little bit more points. So I give this bench... Four point two. Yeah, four point two. It's a four point two bench. Let's go to the exit. They're not level or even. Some are this, some are that. Yeah. And like the potato over. Yeah, me too. Maybe you can put yourself on the rope just in case. Yeah. Yeah. B. Griffin, you overestimated indeed. A bit of butter will help you digest. All right, let's, uh, all right, let's wait. Wait until people pass. Yeah. <laughs> Try the dungeon, yeah. All right, well, let's go downstairs. Ariel's the, this is the best castle you've been to in Ireland, says Dermot. Yeah, I'm glad, Dermot, yeah. It, um, there's good service here, which is nice. Still think you should publish a bench coffee table book, says Susie. All right, cool, Susie. Will do. Featuring the mega shadow of myself. Audrey, you say that the arrows are slit shaped, so arrows can be fired out, but they can't come in. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Do you guys want to go first? 
No, we have. Ashley says, I want to glide down these stairs in a flowy princess dress. Oh, that's amazing, Ashley. <laughs> oh my god. This has a very ominous name, the murder hole. What? What is this? All right, can I fit through here? On the floor of this embrasure is the murder hole that originally allowed the lobby area below to cover by deadly fire in the case the entrance was breached. Oh, here you pour boiling hot oil or fire or whatnot. A large stone slab was removed, which then left an opening through which an undesirable intruder could be attacked with deadly fire. Boiling tar or even a sword or a spike. Ugh. Ladies and gentlemen, and people of all genders, the murder hole. Ashley says, I got one of those. Oh, Ashley, you have a well-equipped home. Stop working out and getting too big. <laughs> to get through this murder hole, you need some butter. Oh, there we go. <sighs> the murder hole. Sounds like a good podcast name. Girl the Curl says, I say this as I eat a bowl of cereal with blueberries and banana. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was so much fun, ladies and gentlemen. So that was Blarney Castle, everyone. Blarney Castle. I'll show it to you one, one more time from the outside. Jennifer says, is that a real bathroom? Yeah, there's bathrooms here, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure inside the castle, but right next door. And we're over here. It's the poison garden. Usually this would be packed to the brim with people. Uh, you would have to wait 90 minutes, an hour. It's like a Disney ride in order to kiss the Blarney Stone. Or even just go up. Darren says, oh, don't go. You're good crack. There.
Aaron. That is the kindest thing an Irish person can tell a foreigner. That he is good crack. Wow. Thank you so much. It's almost like being knighted by the queen when an Irish person tells you you're good crack. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll show you the walls. Alan says, you absolutely have the gift of eloquence. Oh, thank you so much. Jennifer says, thank you. You do a great job. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Whoa. Steep drop here. Oh, here's the poison garden. Who wants to check out the poison garden? Let me know. Veronica says, usually you can tell if an Irish person likes you if they insult you. Oh, I get it. Okay. The Poison Garden. The Blarney Poison Garden was created with the purpose of educating visitors about the poisonous plants that can be found in both the wild and also in our own gardens. It aims to both show the positive and negative aspects of these plants by looking at their various uses both traditionally and in modern times. The site on which this garden stands may have very, very well been a similar garden where plants will have been grown for medicinal and culinary purposes. These psychic gardens were used in medieval Europe. Although the plants are very dangerous, there are actually very few deaths of result from poisoning from the plants. They do, however, cause millions of deaths a year, just not in their natural state. The large number of deaths occur once you make products from the plants. Every year thousands of people die from overdose of heroin, opium poppy, over 5 million die from smoking, tobacco, and these plants can be used for great benefit as well. So this is our final stop for the tour. The poison garden. Wow, what plants are harmful? All parts are harmful except for the flesh of the bear. What? This entire tree is harmful. Okay. Um, this contains taxine alkaloids, which are easily absorbed if digested. There might be no symptoms and death might follow within a few hours of ingestion. Oh no. <laughs> if symptoms do occur, they include trembling, staggering, coldness, weak pulse, and collapse. All right, I'm staying away from this tree. Don't hug this tree, ladies and gentlemen. Don't kiss this tree either. I would uh, recommend against it. Stephanie says, a stone you can kiss and a tree you cannot. That is a great title for a historical novel about the Blarney Castle. What else is here? <laughs> wait, 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 what? The growing marijuana here? Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen. The growing cannabis sativa. I'm risking my life here. Getting so close to getting stoned. For the purpose of a live video. But apparently they have cannabis right there. How is that legal here to grow a cannabis plant? I guess because of its scientific purposes? Right there, it's cannabis. I think cannabis plant. Yeah, that should be it. The bud is was used to make uh, what you smoke. The rest is the hemp stalk. And there's also opium. Oh, yeah, if you want a little bit of opium, a little bit of poppy, smoke it up. Here, you can find some good crack. But I'm talking about the, you know, the drug crack, not... Not C R A I C. I don't think it's good crack, Irish crack, to smoke some crack. No, they're not. So, the stinking iris. What parts are harmful? Roots, seeds, and leaves. It causes vomiting, excessive salivation. Sorry, it's out of focus. Excessive salivation and diarrhea. Mm, said to smell like roast beef. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Neat geodesic dome, yeah. 
It is, yeah, yeah. These are geodesic domes, I think, yeah. Deadly Nightshade, oh. Yeah. Causes hallucinations, difficulty swallowing, and death. Yeah, never seen a deadly nightshade plant in person. In Resistance Italy, women had nightshade drops to dilate their pupils as a cosmetic enhancement. So... This is what I was talking about in Salem. This, this topic right here. This is not really well talked about, but the, I'll tell you very briefly, of the hallucinations that one sees from a deadly nightshade plant look and feel real. You might start thinking they are actually real, physical things. Um, so it's, it's a very, very nasty drug. And that's why almost no one talks about it. That's why it's a rather terrifying subject, especially when you uh, put into relation to witches and to the occult as well. Um, on, different from uh, psychedelic, where psychedelic, you know you're hallucinating and you just see pretty colors or you might envision going far into space if you take something very strong, but it's very different. Uh, so yeah, these, these are very nasty, nasty drugs. Is plaque colish. Rhubarb? Wait, rhubarb is poisonous? Rhubarb gives you breathing difficulties, convulsions. I didn't know rhubarb was poisonous. I love it on my pies. Wow, it's so weird being in the presence of these highly poisonous plants and the poisonous tree that I just, my head touched. Wolfsbane. Gas, gastrointestinal distress, slowing of the heart and death. That's why it causes. This was the poisonous plant featured in Harry Potter right here. These are lords and ladies. Irritation, swelling, and difficult breathing. Lords and ladies. It's the rhubarb leaves that are poisonous, says K. Okay, thank you. A Himalayan mandrake. Oh, I heard of this one before. Are the plants in jail? I think some of them are locked up because they're illegal substances. So I think deadly nightshade is illegal, and I think some of them are illegal. Herbane. Oh, herbane. So herbane is interesting. Herbane, right over here. Very interesting drug. Oh, my gimbal's acting up. But very interesting drug because there used to be a beer made with herbane. And when you dilute herbane into a beer, you end up getting a hallucinogenic effect. Uh, also a very strong hallucinogenic effect, different from a psychedelic, similar to nightshade. You actually see things. And it was rumored that this was used for witchcraft and for occult rituals, mostly in Eastern Europe and in Central Europe, also like Germany and Prague and that area. So herbane beer is actually illegal, I think, in many of those countries um, because people especially in smaller areas, I think are known to sometimes make it. But it could be poisonous in high amounts as well. Your main. Ashley says it's mentioned in the Vampire Diaries, really? And tea. Oh, I didn't know tea. <laughs> tea is poisonous, but super high amounts. Hmm? 
lily of the valley. Causes heart slowing, blurred vision, and vomiting. Oh no. Its flower scent is used in perfumes. Lily of the valley. Gary says, you're very knowledgeable about these <laughs> hallucinogenic substances. Yes, indeed I am. I, I have researched them. Um, and um, it's very scary stuff, <laughs> to, to be honest. I, I, I went deep into the rabbit hole. And there, there's information you can find about these plants. It's very scary stuff. And there's, there's people who write online of having direct accounts of ex using those drugs. Oh, whew, it's chilling stuff. So, yeah. Um, curiosity sometimes kills the cat. And I think, uh, yeah, it's something I would never want to research again, I think. So, yeah, <laughs> there we go. It kind of puts me a pit in my stomach just being there. Ooh. I'll show you more of the castle here. Which way do I go? Sarah, will we see the Blarney Stone? It, 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 go back earlier in the video. Right here. And there's also the Blarney House, which is not accessible. I think it's a different uh, a, attraction. And there's a lot of other things here to see. So it's a huge area, huge, huge area. I'm surprised there aren't security guards in that garden. Yeah. Well, the thing is you have to make, you have to process them generally. Um, 30,000 castles in Ireland. That's more than Scotland and England combined, says Veronica. Wow. Is it really that much? It's not even that big of an island. How could it be that much? Ooh. Coach House Cafe. Joanne says, I got a haircut. Indeed I did, yeah. Sarah says, let's see the Blarney Stone. Sarah, just go to the beginning of the video after this video is done. Or to the middle of the video. All right, I'll show you one more view from the, from the castle this way. Hey. Wendy says, get a coffee. Oh yeah, I'm in the mood for a coffee. I'm gonna grab it somewhere else. Lovely day there. It's rain, rain, rain here in Edinburgh. Says Susie. And there's Connor the Crow there in the distance, chilling. Oh, that's a sculpture. Why is there scaffolding? They're repair repairing this part of the tower. That's why. And you used to be able to go into the dungeons, but unfortunately not anymore. The dungeons were here. And this is the north wall. Wow. So medieval, yeah, built in 1446. Green and lush, says unspecified V. It really is green and lush. Scaffolding are following you from New York. B Griffin says, you're sure you're not Staten Island with all that scaffolding? <laughs> indeed, indeed. 
Hey, Pat says I'm 45 minutes away from your daughter's, um, or your granddaughter's home city. Everyone, wish Pat a super happy birthday. Uh, Pat has been watching for a few months and comments very frequently and has been leaving a few stars here and there. So a huge round of hearts. Pat uh, has been watching many of these months, telling me a lot about Ireland as well. Uh, so huge round of hearts for Pat. Happy birthday. I'm not sure if it's exactly right now your birthday, but it should be either now or in a few hours. So happy, happy birthday to you, Pat, uh, in case I can't go uh, tomorrow and tell you happy birthday. So happy birthday to you, Pat. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions. I'm going to walk towards the exit. Uh, so I got to get back to D. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, this exploration of Blarney Castle. Really fun castle that I highly recommend going to. And um, admission is 18 euro. So it's quite expensive. And I would recommend not coming here in a rush. So come here early in the morning, unlike what I did. I came here a little bit later and the grounds close at 5.30 strictly. Last admission is at 4, 4.30. So come here earlier so you can enjoy more of the grounds and see more of the gardens and the house and take maybe a little bit more time in the castle. Uh, it's definitely worth it. And uh, we also recommend buying some food or eating some food beforehand. Uh, my thumbs up to Will there be another live video today? No, just this one today. And happy Tuesday says Wendy. I'm so glad Wendy. Thank you so much for the happy birthday. I mean, a happy birthday to Matt, to Pat. Hey, uh, Carmen's birthday too. Hey, Carmen, happy birthday to you too, Carmen. I love the medieval period, says Alessandra. Oh, I'm so glad, Alessandra, that's awesome to hear. I need to break out that old student ID so that I can get a discount. Pro tip, you can get a discount, but it's only like two euro online. Two euro here and there is pretty valuable. So yeah, online, if you buy online, you get two euros less. And here is where the rivers meet. This was endlessly entertaining, says Susie. I'm so glad, Susie. Today's my 77th birthday. Wow, Pat, that's awesome. Congrats on 77. Tomorrow, uh, there will be no scheduled live video. I may consider doing one in the afternoon, so stay tuned. Um, because I am in transit. I'm going to a new place, a new realm here in uh, Ireland and also I'm here for one more week so we have one more week of videos left uh, both the short ones on TikTok and FB and also on U uh, YT so I'm gonna say this right now uh, what's happening on FB I'm not so confident that will last too long so do consider following me on YouTube Urbanist Exploring Cities if you watch me on Facebook Go to YouTube, Urbanist Exploring Cities, and also go on TikTok. My name, Ariel Vieira. Uh, just in case all goes to hell with, uh, with Facebook, because there's, they're handling a lot of crazy stuff now. So feel free to follow me on those two platforms so you can keep seeing my show uh, wherever it's available. Thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in. Become a patron, patreon.com slash urbanist. Keep being awesome, and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Slangofol. Bye for now. Bye-bye.